Hi friends, Amy here. I just wanted to share with you some promo reels from some really amazing podcasts in our BooPod network. Please give them a listen. Sometimes those with a strong attachment to a specific place during their lifetime choose to stick around reliving moments, or specific events that took place there. It all comes back to the history that was left behind. That history leaves an impression. This is the Haunted Happy Hour podcast, a show dedicated to uncorking chilling conversations about the paranormal. We're your hosts, Lily and Vanessa. We dig through the history of locations to get an understanding of why certain places are considered to be haunted, what happened there, and why. We seek to understand the reasons for encountering some sort of paranormal manifestations in certain locations while sharing our own experiences. Took some shots, Mm -hmm. everything was great, but then when I looked the second time, I was already down to 7%. I had like 50 some. Oh my God. Join us in our haunted lounge as we share stories about the history, hauntings, and lore throughout our hometowns across the Midwest and beyond. For those looking to find out what spooky tales lie trapped within some of America's cities and towns, join us for the next Haunted Happy Hour. We'll talk spirits, drink spirits, and sometimes even encounter spirits. I could definitely taste the the vanilla. Honestly, it's not as strong as what it smells like. I give this one two thumbs up. Okay, now that we're enjoying our drink though, let's go ahead and talk about the stories. You can catch us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart, or anywhere you listen to your favorite podcast. And if you have Echo devices, an easy way to listen is just say, Alexa, Play Haunted Happy Hour podcast. So we invite you to sit back, grab a cocktail, and let us introduce you to some history, mayhem, hauntings, and spirits right here on the Haunted Happy Hour podcast. Cheers! Hello, and welcome to Horror Roulette, where you never know what you're going to get. We're your hosts. I'm Em, and that's my brother, Nick. Each week, we spin the Wheel of Misfortune to randomly generate an episode topic, which makes our lives miserable, but this podcast listenable. We've covered everything from the Toy Box Killer to Jack and Jill. From Ed Wood to Black Widows, we've suffered through it all. Find us wherever you listen to podcasts, and check us out at HorrorRoulette.com. Listen if you dare. Welcome to the activity continues. This is Megan and I'm back. She back, baby. I hope you missed me, but I love the fact that Amy was able to fill in for me. It was Amy squared. That's right. It was. It was. And I I just don't want anyone to feel bad or feel like 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 I was trying to replace Megan or that no. Amy jumped in or anything like that. Megan actually asked Amy yes. to fill in for her. Yes. And then came to me later and said, hey, I don't feel well enough to do this, but Amy is willing to do it. And I was like, oh, are you sure? sure Yeah, we both didn't want to miss a week. I was down with a horrendous back injury. Yeah. I got an MRI. I have three bulging discs. Jesus. So, you know, I'm 
most people do like maybe one. I'm just an overachiever. Yeah. Yeah. I went to the ER. I w- I mean, you guys, it was, I literally almost told my husband to call an ambulance because I could not get out of bed. Yeah. Oh, I, I threw my back out. Not as bad as you. I, mine wasn't a bulging disc or anything. I don't know what I did. Some kind of a weird. Your alarm. It's time to record. It's telling me to record. It's time, it's time to, to record. record. Yeah, I don't know what I did. It was many years ago. It was when I was working in daycare. And I, I woke up like that. And I, I couldn't. Like, mm-hmm. I was walking like Frankenstein yes. to get yep. on the, the bus to go to work. Yep. And and I'm running around after three-year-olds. And that was <gasps> not fun. I would have cried. It was bad. And every time I would sit for more than, like, two seconds, I, everything seized up. Yep. Oh, yep. I was having the back spasms all yeah. night. And then I'd get up. And as soon as I would try to move. Everything would go, and then I couldn't breathe. I'd be like, right. <laughs> yeah, it was horrible. And and yeah. I, mine was not nearly as bad as yours. So I can only imagine oh my God. the it hell you have gone terrible. through for the past. It was three what? weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. It was, it was so bad, but Amy graciously yes. agreed to, to fill in for me. So yeah. you guys, we wouldn't disappoint you and, and you would have something when I was out. So yeah. thank you so much, Amy. Yes. Um, Ooh, ooh, she is the best. The best. And everybody keep Amy in your thoughts right now. Recently, her mm-hmm. beautiful, beautiful, sweet, special Briggs, who was a black lab, mm-hmm. crossed the rainbow bridge. Yeah. So yeah. We're thinking like the day after Amy. we recorded. Yeah. Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Mother's Day. Uh, Mother's Day. So think God. of Amy and yeah. send her some healing thoughts because she's Mm -hmm. uh, she's struggling as anybody would really when you lose a pet it's yeah it's a part of your family it's you know they're more than just a dog or a cat or a gerbil or a whatever or spiders zoe you know sure sure i mean i i I can't imagine crying over a spider but you know what i've never fallen in love with a spider so i can't i can't speak to that i can i'm not gonna yep it's 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 your own flavor and (laughs) I don't agree with the flavor, but you know what? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. You like just I wouldn't. Haven't, you just haven't met the right spider. No, I'm good. I I've I've met lots, and of all of those spiders, I've never met one. And I've been like, you know what? You're pretty okay. Yeah, you're pretty cool, dude. Yeah. But yeah, so please. I like spiders. I don't um, want them touching me, but they can live in my house as long as they don't bother me. I try you know? to let them live. I've tried to not kill them, but if they're big, they're dying. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Like. If like I can see the separation of their body and their butt, like if that's how big they are, you're gonna die. I'm that's a big sorry. spider. That's a big spider. Jesus, yeah. take the wheel. I'll hold yeah. the flamethrower and we'll burn this place <laughs> to the ground. Burn this fucker to the ground. We're done. Like that's in, why we have homos insurance. My last episode, <laughs> Amy said, burn this fucker to the ground. Yeah, burn it. Yep. Oh, and then and right it wasn't a spider. I'm, it was just a ghost. But oh well, you know some ghosts are not nice. Yeah. And then right after I started to get on the mend, Jordan got pink eye. Yeah. Uh, oh, and then it spread to the other eye. So we, yep. you guys, that always we happens. Need, we need an old priest and a young priest yeah. in this house. I need some <laughs> sage. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's been. I'm, I'm burning it's been a month. right now. It's Good it's white you. sage. Oh, nice. Yeah. So yes. Yeah, so Amy, thank you so much for filling in for me and we are sending you all the love and the healing she's been seeing a lot of signs though so i think it's briggs telling her like i'm okay i told her to imagine that steve Irwin was welcoming briggs (laughs) yeah the rainbow Rainbow bridge Bridge. yeah and that made me cry yeah i cried when you told me that too yeah yeah i cried a lot um oh i cried when she told me he passed i was there's a hummingbird outside my window right now. It is 8, 19 p.m. Wow. And a hummingbird just came to my feeder. Okay. So uh, that's weird. that up. Yeah. Is that Briggs? <laughs> it might they have are. Been. They are. I've never met Briggs, but they, hummingbirds are messengers. That's, I have a little oh, hummingbird feeder right outside nice. my window here. Yeah. I met Briggs. He was a good boy. He was yeah. a good boy. Oh, he was a cutie. So. And as she had said in, in the last episode we did, I might've cut this part out because well, first of all, I cut a bunch out just for time, but then also, you know, he had passed and I didn't want to mm-hmm. leave too much in because I didn't want her to be all sad all over again. Yeah. yeah. We are going to release that at some point to patrons, but she mentioned, you know, she was talking about him and how mm-hmm. he had had this surgery to mm-hmm. remove 
tumor and yep. the spleen and all this, but she's yeah. like, but it's it's spread and da da da. And she called him her heart and soul dog. Yes. And you know, we all have yeah. that at least one. If yep. we're lucky enough, we have more than one pet in our lives that mm-hmm. is one of those where you're like, oh fuck, I better go before that one or this is not gonna go well. Yep. And I've had two, luckily, so far in my life that both have passed. But yeah, Mm -hmm. my first one, I was like, I, I have to go before him. There's no way I'm going to survive. Yeah. Yeah. And of course I did. It was very painful. It was hard. It wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. You know, it was the right time. And, you Mm -hmm. know, he lived a good life and blah, 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 all that stuff that you think and you say and whatever. It's, yeah, it's okay. Um, But some are harder than others. Yeah. Mine was my first cat, Mr. Snoops. He followed oh. me everywhere. Oh. He was my buddy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Seven, he lived to be 17. Mm. But you know what? Listen, it's it's tough. And your your grief journey is yours. It's yep. there's no right way, there's no wrong way. You yeah. laugh, you cry, you, you know, you you just you deal. And yeah. so we're we're thinking of you, Amy. We're thinking yeah. of you. So yeah, we are. Anyways. And- Okay, so moving on to. We are a comedy podcast, I swear. (laughs) We just love animals. We do. (laughs) And our friends. We do. And our friends. And our friends love animals. And we're we're here for them. It's all all a thing. It is. Mm. That was was a good duo sigh there. It was. We didn't even plan it. No. It reminds me of Mrs. Maisel when they're doing their exercises and they're like, all right, stand up and fall down. Yeah. (laughs) Are you watching Maisel this season? I haven't watched it since. Oh. I think the end of season two was the last time I oh, watched it. Okay. So you didn't watch last season either. No. Um, it's really taken some turns. It's very interesting. Is I'm, it? Yeah. I really enjoy it. I need it. to get back into it because I, I just. It. I don't know. The end of season. Which is the end of. Which is the season where she gets proposed to by Zachary Levi. Is that one? I think I saw. Part I don't of remember. Two. That Mem- member that she, might be one. I think that's one. I saw part of season two. I don't think I finished season two even. Mm. I know her mom kind of went cuckoo bananas. She did, and then they. She well, they're moved all to, that, like the white all. Are, I realized all cuckoo bananas. I realized at, at this season. I don't know if it's a spoiler or not, but I realized that the Weissmans they're not great people. They're yeah. kind of shitty. Yeah, and. Abe yeah. has always been kind of shitty, to yeah. be honest. Like, he's never been my favorite. I mean, you love him because he's a bubbling idiot. Yeah. But he's kind of a dick. He can't, I mean, the fact that he quit his job without, like, any kind of backup plan. Yeah. You are the only breadwinner. Right. You can't just do that. And you Not, live in yeah. a, a fucking Upper East Side apartment. Oh, my God. Yeah. With, like, 400 rooms. That place yeah. is fucking huge. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. A hall and you have a maid. Like you mm-hmm. can't just decide one day to quit. Yeah. Abe. Abe. You moron. Come on, Abe. Get it together. Come on. Speaking <sighs> of Jewish families. Sure. I Good finished <laughs> I finished this week mm-hmm. watching Jewish matchmaking on Netflix. <laughs> My friend um, so has been good. watching that. She's been watching it too. I, love I should it. watch it. They're my people. It's, oh my god, me too. Yeah. I love it. I'm learning a lot of things I did not know about Jewish people. Yeah, I should watch it. I am a quarter Jewish. I mean, yeah, there you go. I'm not. I, I'm I'm Jewish in my heart, but I'm right. not Jewish in my genealogy. Mm-mm. But do you know that there? And I don't know what it's called. We need Amy here to help us figure mm-hmm. out what this is called. Spoiler for what we're going to talk about in a little bit. But there's a a type of or there's a word for when um, when Jewish people are courting mm-hmm. and they do not touch the whole time they're dating. Really? They do not even like t- right. no touching like don't. Right. No, I don't just mean. Yeah. <laughs> touch at all. <laughs> like you can't even reach for the salt at the same time. Wow. What no happens touching. if they touch? I don't know. They explode. Maybe I don't know. Can't get married. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's that serious. But I know you are not allowed to touch. They do not touch. 
until the ceremony. And the woman who's the matchmaker, she is fucking delightful. Aliza is her name. Make me a match. (laughs) She and her husband did this. They did not touch until the ceremony. And she said when he took her hand at the ceremony Uh and pledged his love, she felt all this like energy and it sounded beautiful but cute it's super cute but also mm, does that work for most people i just realized i've been speaking into my microphone (laughs) (laughs) oh funny okay plug that so i'm gonna sound tinny that's all right Jesus. I love it. All yeah. Right. Thanks for plugging in. I'm going to have some wine. Y- yeah. Have some wine because we need it. The shit. Jeez Louise. I looked over and I'm like, what is that? What's that cord? What is that doing USB that? cord for? <laughs> you guys, oh. Megan's back. <laughs> <laughs> She's so back. She's so back. <laughs> No, it's fine. I'm fine. Yeah, we're all fine. <laughs> it's great. It's super great. It's super okay. Great. So, yeah. This week, mm-hmm. Megan is recapping the Dead Files episode called Deadly Attraction. Bum, bum, it, bum. Bum, it's season <laughs> one, episode 14, and it mm-hmm. originally aired on May 25th. 2012, which I noted is right around when this one will be released. Also, isn't that around when the Mayans said the world was going to end? Wasn't it like May 20th of 2012 or something? May 21st? I chose this because it takes place in Wichita, Kansas. Mm -hmm. And that made me think of the BTK killer. Um, Oh, right. So that's why I did it. Content warning, there is child death in the history of it okay but they don't talk about it too much so i wasn't okay. well if you were okay with it then I'm i was sure okay with it other yeah. people won't yeah. be too upset also we need to give a big shout out to our amazing patrons mm-hmm. thank you so much there you guys are you're the super best. amazing you're yeah. you're just like i don't even think of you as patrons i honestly think of you as friends yeah of so course. great conversations you're suggesting episodes thank Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. reviewing us joining us for the happy hours Mm -hmm. telling amy she's got ghosts yeah telling me there's a child (laughs) around me which is yeah i don't enjoy that i don't enjoy that (laughs) Mm -mm. okay um especially because i was working yesterday and jordan just picked my hand up and bit my thumb out of nowhere oh just nowhere so i picked him up and put him in a timeout I just see i would have bit his thumb but that's just how <laughs> tit for tat <laughs> he probably would have thought it was a joke and laughed yeah, and i'm yeah. like no. i mean i wouldn't bite real hard but oh i know i'm like no actually i'd just bite it off <laughs> so he'll um, never do that again <laughs> it's true <laughs> <laughs> and we got wood floors so the blood cleanup would be real easy super easy so yes thank you so much to all of our patrons if you want to join us you Mm -hmm. can do it for as little as a dollar a month that's right that's way less than a cup of coffee at starbucks even just a plain black cup of coffee (laughs) a large but still yeah 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 so and we love we're having a great time over there really good discussions i gotta give a shout out to scarlet scarlet and gray witch yeah who is quite active which we love and yep. she's c- starting conversations and she's, she's giving out best. ideas and and yeah so we're we're having a great great time over there great conversation. we are yep, yep we're we're loving it so feel free to join a dollar yep. a month you get a bunch of you know bonus stuff you get conversations that we cut out mm-hmm. that yep. are hysterical <laughs> well and some things are gonna change a little bit um mm-hmm. in our this is you know we kind of stopped doing seasons like we don't right. really call it seasons anymore but when i looked at like we did 20 some episodes in season one 20 some mm-hmm. episodes in season two and we are now at 20 some more episodes mm-hmm. in which what we're three. calling season yeah. three so we are gonna take a little mini break next week yes we're still gonna re- we're still gonna 
record. We're still going to do something. It's just not going to be covering an episode of the Dead House. I think we're I think we're just going to chit chat. Mm -hmm. However, there are some things that we are going to change. We have asked Amy P, Amy, patron Amy. We need Mm -hmm. a nickname for her. I'm not sure what we're going to use yet. So if you have any ideas. Let, Let us, us know. know. Yep. She's open. Please keep it nice. She's yeah. delightful. She's delightful. So she is going to join our show. Yeah. And she is going to be like our fact checker. Yep. Uh, we probably need a cuter name for that too. Yep. But she is going to join us and she'll, she'll be on with us. Mm-hmm. So you'll see the three of and us hear. here. Yep. And hear her and see and, her. And yep. You'll hear her and you'll see her. And what and you know how when Megan and I are talking about something and we're like, what's the name of that thing? What's that thing? <laughs> and then we always say, Amy's yelling at us right now. Yes. Well, she's going to be doing that in she's real She's going to be time. yelling at us in real life. Yeah. yeah. And you'll so get she, to hear it too. Yep. Yeah. So if she knows it at the time, she can just blurt it out. Yep. If it's something she needs to look up, we will just continue doing our thing and, and let Amy go and deal with that and figure it out and then come back to us and say, yo, what you and you said, what is that? It's this. Mm-hmm. And like today, she just dropped a piece of knowledge on us. Did you yeah. know that until like the 1200s, grapes were called wine berries? I know. I love it. I'm calling I it know. That from now on. I didn't. I had no idea. We were just texting yeah. and she was like, BTW. Yeah. Grapes are called wine berries. And I'm yeah. like, why are they not called that? They should, they should still, still be, be called, called that. that. For sure. That is the best name for grapes. Right. Except maybe are. when you're feeding your toddler, like here, do you want a wine berry? That might <laughs> might not be the best. Yeah. But for every like 21 and older, they should only be referred to as wine berries. Right. Right. So she's yeah. full of fun info like that. She is. She's she's very smart. Mm-hmm. She used to be a teacher. Yep. So she's very good at explaining things. Yes. To... Without making you feel like an idiot. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So she's she's perfect for this role. Yes. And and we adore She's, her. So yeah. we That's would love to way. bring her into our little yes. family. And so she's going to be joining us starting mm-hmm. next week. So she's going to kind of keep us in check. Yep. And uh, someone and needs she, to. She will probably also cover an episode here and, here there. and again when she yep. wants to. If she has something she really wants to do, or there's like five weeks in a month, maybe she'll do that extra week or you know we're not we haven't solidified anything yet but anyway right. she's going to be joining us and she's going to be here and you'll see her and hear her and um all of that the other thing that we are thinking of doing we're going to start this mm-hmm. we may not be able to keep this up but this is <laughs> this is the plan we would like to start now recapping only the new episodes mm-hmm. of the dead files Yep, because the new episode, the new season starts next week for mm-hmm. us. You guys will have already heard it by now, and or seen it by now. Yeah, and so we are going to just try and recap the new yes. episodes. Yep, and they will be released about a week after the They've episode aired. of the Dead Files has yeah. aired. So you'll have a week to watch it if you want to watch it before mm-hmm. you listen to us, or just listen to us later. Or whatever, yeah, if you want to watch it first. Your or choice. Whatever. Or if you don't have the Discovery Channel or the Travel Channel, you just want to hear us talk about it. That's fine, too. Yeah. Whatever um, but you want. It'll be you'll have a week in between mm-hmm. because we don't we won't be able to get them early. Like right. sometimes shows will they'll give it to you early. I didn't ask. I don't even We're know. We're not that ask. special. We're not that special. Yet. We need that big, you guys. Yet. So yes. Manifest. Very good. Thank you. Someday we will be mm-hmm. able to watch them ahead of time. Look, but we're already not, expanding. That's so. right. We are we are expanding. Yep. And we're expanding in a different way also that I I've started making shorts for mm-hmm. YouTube. I would call them audiograms, but there's video involved too. So yeah. it's not just audio. And I've been posting them on YouTube and mm-hmm. on Instagram and mm-hmm. Facebook and mm-hmm. We're getting we're getting some juice. We're getting some hits. So hey, whatever you know what? works. I'll take it. Yep. Yeah. So find us over on on YouTube, and the links will be in the show in notes. The show or notes. links to the links will be in the mm-hmm. <laughs> show notes. It's I will link put a link to it. Yeah, links and also on YouTube, YouTube now has a thing where you can where you can actually be a podcast, not just a channel with videos okay. or whatever. Yep. So I have 
converted all of our show into Mm -hmm. an actual podcast. Nice. So that is, it it doesn't really look that much different to the user, but I think it'll show up differently as people search like a podcast or if they search podcast or whatever, it'll show up. So lots of new stuff like that going on for our fourth season. So yeah. Yeah, that's where perfect. we are. Perfect. Lots of changes. So lots of changes. Yeah, fun stuff. Yeah, we're we're excited. We also have a happy hour coming up, mm-hmm. which will have already passed. When is it uh, again? It's the twenty first. So it's oh eight, shit, today's the eighteenth, nineteen twenty. That's 20. Sunday. Three days. Yeah, Sunday. What am I doing on Sunday? Well, I don't know, but <laughs> you are SVP. Yes. So damn it. <laughs> this is yes. Yeah. So yeah. that'll so that'll be will, fun. It's going to be great fun. I hope Zoe's there. I yeah. hope we get more people to join. I hope so, too. Um, yeah. We had a few and, patrons and that a, didn't make it to the last one, yeah. so hopefully they'll make it to this one, and, yeah. and we'll have a rip-roaring we'll good time. We will have had a rip-roaring good time. Well, it was so much fun, The last fun, you one guys. was like two and a half hours, and I we know. were like, okay, we should probably go, especially because like Zoe's in, she's in, in the, the, UK. the she's across the pond and she's so it was York, like 10 30 there and i'm yeah. like girlfriend like that's way past my bedtime yeah yeah it's she's younger than us though she can stay up i know she is she i assume she's younger than us i don't really know but she's younger than me i mean everybody is so <laughs> <laughs> i'm a dinosaur so <laughs> oh stop it oh stop it oh you stop it <laughs> oh you oh you all right anything all right. else before no, I... we jump into it i think we're good Let's... Jump right All in. Right. So, hi friends. Do us and yourselves a favor and check out our affiliate, Three Spirit Drinks. They create plant-based, non-alcoholic elixirs that are cruelty-free and vegan. And they are designed to give you some of the benefits of alcohol without the hangover and other side effects. If you're looking to cut down on alcohol but still want the buzz, check them out. The link is us. Three spirit drinks.com and use the promo code The Activity Continues for 15% off your entire order. All right, so it's Deadly Attraction. Um, we're in Wichita, Kansas, which again, BTK. And right. Kristen called Steve, and they've got some strange things going on in the home. And she sent a video that actually really freaked Steve out. And they sh- they play it a lot. I'm going to try. I wonder if I took a video. They It was tough to get because they took, like, they would show snippets of it and then, oh. like, cut back and forth. And they mm. showed it throughout the episode. Okay. But the grandkids have moved in now and they're being affected as well. And so, really, that's what caused Kristen to call them is, you know, the fear of the the grandkids. So, then we've got... It shows Amy and her arrival and it shows her in the car because we're still in season one. So they're kind of doing, you know, showing her pulling up. And yeah, she says it's a long hallway, all black and burnt. The teenage girl showed up. There is a huge gash across the lower right side of her hairline. And so then we've got Matt doing his walk, clearing everything. And the location is now (laughs) ready for tonight's walk. So Amy opens the door and she goes inside and she kind of holds her hand on the door for a minute. And she says, there are two people in here. She says an elderly couple, a man and a woman. And she says, and this is the only time that she talks to talks about these people. She doesn't talk about them in the reveal. She doesn't bring them up again. Hmm. As far as I remember, I started watching this. (laughs) Yeah. I started watching this and then everything happened and then I stopped. So and then mm. I just finished it yesterday. <laughs> so I'm just as clueless as some of you for this because my memory is <laughs> like not great. So she says the elderly couple, they like it there. And the woman likes being dead because she can watch people come and go. She's basically like it's a real life soap opera that she oh my just God. watches everybody's lives. And I I'm love like, it. That's not me. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. That would be me. I'd be like, pop the popcorn. Yeah. I'd be popcorn. like. I'd be like and, getting all the hot tea. I'd yep. be like getting all the hot gas. Mm-hmm. So live, you know, live your best dead life. That dead, <laughs> dead your best life. I don't know how you would say that, but. <laughs> and then there's also something here that's not so good. And she says it, it comes from outside. She said she wants to leave. She doesn't. Amy not wants to leave? Good, yeah, Amy, has, Amy okay. wants to leave. She's not having a good time. No. Okay. So then we go to Steve and Kristen, and Kristen says she hears things. 
bumps against the wall when nobody is there. But she said she feels whatever is there is connected to her for some reason. And we get into that later. Okay. And she says it's affecting her grandchildren as well. And she's afraid for them. And Steve asks if this is ever, if anything like this has ever happened to her before. And she says, yeah, like every place. And so I wrote, maybe she's a sensitive or Mm. a medium or something because, you know, if it's happening to you all the time, that's not just the location. Right, right. She tells Steve that she thought she could handle it on her own, but it's too much, especially now with the grandkids getting involved. And so she's just really, really scared for them. Steve asks if she's thought of the selling the house, and, and she says no. And Steve says why, and she says, honestly, whatever is in the house will follow her. And I said, mm-hmm. same girlfriend. Like, yeah. Been that there, happens. done that. Yep. Yep. The, my ghost, he attached himself to me, so Frank, because I right. reminded him of his sister. So And that was like 10 years, right? That was 10 years that he yeah. was with me. Yeah. He did what not What did leave. you, how did he ever leave? Did he just disappear, or did no. you go? So or? I called the paranormal Dakota County Paranormal Society. So I, okay. So I went to a meetup with them and they had said that, yeah, we help people. We, you know, do it all for free. And then I walked up to him and I was like, can I get your contact information? I'm like, I have something that's attached to me. I'd really like to figure out what it is, you know? And so they came to my house and they kind of did like an Amy thing where they came, they set up at nighttime. They spent like two and a half hours there. They cool. communicated with him. Mm. And then they told him to move on. And were you there? I was there the whole time. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And they just told him to move on. And so oh, he, he left. Did. Yeah. She, one of her spirit wow. guides actually helped him to cross. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. love that. It was really, it was nice. I don't know what happened to them, but they were great. Good. She was a medium, and it was very much like an Amy team. Yeah. She I wonder was if they're fit. still yeah. around. I wonder, Amy. Fact hey, check. Dakota. <laughs> Dakota Paranormal Group. If you're still- Dakota County Paranormal Dakota. Society. Are you there? It's me, Megan. <laughs> you helped me 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> they were probably like, the fuck? No, they were great. <clears throat> so, So, Kristen says... It didn't just start in this house. It's just continuing in this house. So then we go back to Amy and she says there's a major sensitive who lives here. And she said things are being attracted to the house and not good things. And this walk was really painful for Amy. She said there's a voiceover of her saying and that sometimes the dead are so powerful that they can make the living sick mm. to the point where they feel exhaustion, depression, even physical pain. And that's what Amy experiences on this walk. There's a spirit that's actually really powerful. And she's actually like later in the episode, she's yelling at him and she's like, stop it. Like you're hurting me. Oh my so God. This was a tough walk for her. Mm. So Matt Amy. asks if it can affect the, the living and Amy says, yeah, it makes them sick. So then we get into the master bedroom with Steve and Kristen. And Kristen says she'll be laying in bed trying to sleep. And she hears feet walking up and down the hall. No, thank you. Mm -mm. No, no, we don't Mm -mm. do that. Mm -mm. She says it happens almost every day. And she hears it getting closer to a room like it's walking to her room. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. So then we cut to Amy and she says she's in the master bedroom. She's getting the name Herb or Herbie. She says he's really grumpy and she says his right hip isn't good. He's always in pain. So then we cut back to Kristen and she said she'll go days without sleeping if she's alone. She cannot sleep in that be in that room alone. Oh my God. And she says she has to have somebody in the room with her. Jeez. And then Amy says, we go back to Amy, and Herb doesn't like anyone who's ever lived in the house. Anybody. It doesn't matter who. Doesn't like him. Wow. And then she says, this is his house. And he's asking if Amy, if they can remove people from the home. So essentially, Herb's first thought is that Amy's here to help him. Like, Uh, oh, my God. Thank God you're here. Get these people out of my location. Uh, This is my house. He doesn't give a shit about anybody else. Basically, Uh get him out my room, my house. No. So he kind of sees that as like they are the ghosts that need to go. Like they're invading his space. Yep. And he's like, oh, thank God, Amy, you're here to help me. Mm hmm. Yeah. She's like, "Mm, she's like, it's a funny story. (laughs) No. (laughs) 
<laughs> Bit of a twist. Plot twist. <laughs> so we get to the dining room, and this is where Steve said one of the stupidest things I've ever heard him say. Oh, no, Steve. So I know. It's worse than the dog. Oh, no. So Kristen was sitting in the dining room. She had her back to the wall, and there's a window behind her. And she was feeding her grandson in a high chair. And she said that somebody grabbed her arm and jerked it back forcefully. And Steve goes, well, the window is there. Could someone have put their hand through the window? (laughs) Like who? Okay, the window's there. Did somebody could have put their hand through the window from the outside? A shut window with the glass and a screen? No. Oh, my God. Who's just walking around? Oh, my God, an open window? I should grab her arm. (laughs) No. She said it had never happened before, but it scared her. And I'm like, yeah, Yeah. that would scare me. She said she started crying and she got out of the room. So then we're in with Amy and we're in the dining room. And she says, Herbie is getting aggressive. And then she says. (laughs) Sorry, I like that for a title. Herbie is getting aggressive. (laughs) Yes, I love it. That is it. There's not going to be a better one. Herbie's getting a little aggressive. And then Amy's doing another voiceover. And she says, Herbie won't leave her alone. He's trying to jump her. He's trying to get control of her thoughts and actions. And she says it's dangerous for her. And it's dangerous for anybody nearby. And she keeps telling him to stop. Like, she's like, stop it. Stop. And this, you could tell she was in a lot of pain because yeah. she kept like, mm, ah, oh, Amy. And like, if anyone wonders hands, why she's leaving the show, this that's, is it. Like, that's it. This is just one. Can you of imagine that being your job seasons, every day? Ugh. Twelve episodes, at least a season, of feeling this, and not only this, but I'm sure she feels it when she's not filming. Like, oh yeah, that are drawn to her. You know. Yeah. So then we get to Chris. We're back to Kristen and Steve asks her about the video that she sent him and asks her to describe it. And essentially what it is, is it's her hands and her feet and the veins are just popping out like roid rage, like just super popping out. And it would basically started in her hands and started to go up her arms and you could see it in her feet going up her feet and it hurt. And she said, that's never happened before. And you in the video, she's panicking. She's like, I don't know how to stop mm. it. And so they kind of watch the video and she's like, this is what happens. Then we go to Amy and she says, Herb knows how to physically manipulate the human body. Never good. I don't, I don't like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Kristen talks about the reaction started going up both her arms and then up her legs. And she says she can feel when it's happening. It goes up her legs and then it gets really, really painful. Mm. And so this is really cutting back and forth between Amy and Kristen and Amy and Kristen a lot Mm. because Amy's essentially describing what's happening to her, which is what's happening to Kristen. Yeah. And so Amy says it it really hurts. And she said she feels agitation like going up your spine. Ugh. So Kristen said it felt like every muscle was locked up. She said it was really in pain. And now I'm like, ooh, girlfriend, yeah. And they keep showing this video of her veins. Mm. And Steve was like, well, how did you make it stop? And Kristen said she just told whatever was doing it to stop. And she wanted her body back. So Herb kind of sounds like a bully. For the moment, but not, it keeps doing it again, right? I don't know if it does it again and again. They just reference that one video. Oh, okay. Over and over again. Yeah. Okay. So then we're going back to Amy. And she, Amy says she sees dead people walking up the stairs outside, walking in and walking through the kitchen. And it's just like a line of dead people just coming in. And they're being attracted to the house. So both good and bad things are being attracted mm-hmm. to the house. And then we go to Steve and Jason, who's Kristen's boyfriend. And Jason, you know, says the house creates fear and angst in Kristen. He says she's just uncomfortable. She's unsettled and she's really scared. And the things that are happening to her, you know, worried Jason. They talk about the video and, you know, how he was freaking out. And Jason feels like something was trying to take her over in that video. Mm. And I can't say he's wrong right i mean it's not good yep 
Then we're back to Amy, and she said Herb is really, really mad. And she said it feels like there's hands on her lower back, up and her upper butt, and then she does kind of like like this, like somebody's grabbing her butt, like slapping it. And she said it feels like electricity, like a jolt. And she said Herb knows how to do electrical impulses throughout your body. Ew. So Herb is very powerful and yeah. he knows how to do a lot of stuff. So then we go back to Jason and Steve is like, well, any experiences that you've had? And within the last month, he said he was laying with his hands on his chest. He was trying to sleep, which, first of all, who goes to sleep like that? Like, <laughs> your hand, like what are you, a vampire? And a yeah. <laughs> I want to suck your blood. Like, (laughs) sleep like a normal person, but whatever. And then he said something put its hands on Jason's hands and it was cold. And he said he looked to the left and he sees the silhouette of a little girl. And at first he thought it was one of the grandkids, but then figured out it was not. It was a ghost. Mm. So then the grandkids will talk about dreams that they've had. And the granddaughter talks about a dream that she has over and over and over again. And I have a picture of what she drew, but she <clears> says her little brother is cornered and the small monstrous monstrous characters are throwing things at him and making him cry. And she drew what she saw in her dreams. And it's kind of like, let me see if I can um, find the picture I sent you because I think I sent it to you. No, I sure didn't. Maybe I thought about <laughs> sending it to you. That's that's almost as good. That's probably realistically what happened. So it's got like a longer face with a big nose. Oh, yeah. Spiky Ooh. hair. And the spikes on the head, she describes as antenna. And oh. she just, de- yeah, she described it as an ogre face. She said it's really long and skinny. I don't know if that's going to show up. No, probably not. not No, really long and skinny. It's got long arms and a pointy head. So then we go to Amy. And the eyes are green. The eyes are yellow. Yellow. It's like a yellow highlighter. Yeah. It looks green in the picture, but I don't know why she drew drew it with a yellow highlighter. They don't talk about it, but I'm assuming that's what it's They were probably glowing. Yeah. So then Amy says there's something on the roof. It's been up there for a few months. She doesn't know what it is. She says it's long and skinny, looks like a bug. And she said it scuttles about on the roof. And she takes her hands and like runs them up and down the wall to get like that, you know, scuttle like, yeah, sound. She said it's trying to get in. There's someone in the house that it wants to be attached to. Oh, God. Then we go to Elisa, who's Kristen's daughter. And she said her sons will see th- her son sees things and he's drawn to certain areas in the hallway and he'll like look at the corner and he'll say, Mommy, what is that? And she'll look in the corner and there's nothing there. Fuck no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And Steve asks if he's ever described anything to her and she says he'll just say, oh, no, or he'll say monster. So I'm assuming this is a smaller child, yeah. like four or five, maybe. Yeah. We're not. We don't see them. They don't tell us anything about them other than. Oh, they don't little show the kids at all. No, nope, they don't show okay. the kids at all. No. And then you know, Elisa says her mom used to be really funny, witty, outgoing, and she said lately she's just different. And she said she thinks whatever is in the house is stealing parts of Kristen. Mm. So then we go back to Amy, and she says the bug thing wants in, and then she says it's bad, bad, bad for them. Mm-hmm. And Matt says it wants to attach itself to someone. What What does that mean? What would happen to that person? And Amy looks at him and says, that person would do bad things. Like they would hurt people. <laughs> yeah. Gross. Don't like it. Mm-mm. So then the last owner, Steve was able to track him down, the last owner of the house. Unfortunately, he died a few years ago. Mm-hmm. But the neighbor, Donna, has lived there for a long time. And so she knew the the old neighbor and she said he was kind of an older grouchy dude kids would run up and down the street and he would yell at them get off my lawn yeah (laughs) basically like sorry basically your crotchety old man yeah you know just grumpy 
but he never mentioned anything going on in the house to Donna, never mentioned any activity that he had. I don't know how close they were, if that's something he would have mentioned. And Donna said nothing has ever happened in her house either. Mm -hmm. So that makes me think further that it's Kristen and Mm -hmm. it's not the house. Yeah, it's Kristen. Yeah. Yeah. So Amy, we're back to Amy, and Herb feels like he lived in the house to her, but she doesn't (laughs) know if... Sorry, did you call him Herb? Did I? Herb. (laughs) Sorry, Herb. (laughs) No, that just cracks me up. Herb, oregano time. Herb. (laughs) Herb. Herb feels like he... She said he feels like he lived in the house, Mm -hmm. but she doesn't know if he lived there ever or he just like died and like put himself in the house. Like, this is my house. So she doesn't know if there's any connection to the previous to the house or, you know, he was just like, and I choose you. This one. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And again, he doesn't like people in the house. He doesn't like anybody in the house there. They annoy him. They're in Mm -hmm. his space. It's his house. Get out. I feel you. Yeah. Same. I don't like people in my house and I live with most of them. Right. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) So then we go to Anthony Horsch, who's a historian, and Kristen lives in a section of town known as Delano, which in the olden days was considered the red light district. This is where cowboys would go to blow off steam. I think they blew something. (laughs) (laughs) So something was being blown. Something was being blown. I don't think it was steam. So, you know, you think about cowboys, like they were, he, Anthony's like, they were on the trail for three months, seven days a week, 16 hour days. They get back, they want a little something, something, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And Steve is like, that sounds like a recipe for disaster. (laughs) Well, Steven, you are not wrong. (laughs) In the 1870s, we don't get a definitive year. We just get 1870s. Uh A gun battle happened in Delano and I know it was Delano because they mentioned it several times so I'm not saying it weird I'm saying yeah because like we have a we have a city Delano Delano yeah yeah and I'm like that's I I want to say my guess is we're saying it wrong Minnesota probably saying it wrong we don't do anything wrong (laughs) so a gun battle happened we have Rowdy Joe Low Low Rowdy Joe Low Rowdy Joe Low Rowdy Joe and that's the picture I sent you. And yeah. his competitor, Redbeard. No picture of Redbeard. Okay. They both had dance halls right across from the street from one another. Now, in the reveal, Steve calls them brothels. But Uh-oh. in this, they call them a dance hall. So that's why dance when hall. Steve called them a brothel, I was like, Steve, they they were dance halls. But, you know, I'm. <laughs> that's probably just what they call them to keep Amy the cops. P, are dance halls and brothels the same thing in 18, was it 70s? 1870s. Yeah. And go. So Redbeard's business sounds like a pirate, doesn't he? Redbeard. Does. Yeah, yeah. Arr, I'm Redbeard. Because that's what all pirates sound like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Redbeard's business wasn't doing really well. And on top of that, Rowdy Joe was like 20 years younger than Redbeard. So mm-hmm. not only is Rowdy Joe more s- successful, mm-hmm. he's probably also better looking. Than, than Redbeard, being sure. 20 years younger. Yeah. So Anthony speculates that Redbeard was just plain jealous of him. Mm. So one night, Redbeard saw Joe in the other building, because remember, they're right across the street from his, mm-hmm. each other, and he was just like, fuck this guy, pulled out a gun and shot him. Whoa. But he didn't die, because there was like a gun battle, you know? And during the gun battle, a few innocent bystanders were shot, oh. including a sex worker named Annie Franklin. She was shot in the stomach and the doctors <gasps> assumed it was going to be a mortal wound, which probably correct because 1870s, I, I can't imagine there's a lot of medicine for that. Right. So we're back to Amy. She sees a woman laying down and the back of her head is open and oh. Amy says there's like blood and tissue and skull <gasps> and brain everywhere. And I'm like, ew, gross. Mm. Nasty. And Amy does another voiceover because, you know, we're early in the show. And she talks about how as a sensitive, she can feel what a dead person is experiencing. And the pain that this woman experienced was unbearable. Mm. So she's in a lot of pain during this walk. And she hears gunshots and she sees a black gun. And so she's like channeling this. Mm -hmm. 
So Steve, we're back with Steve and Anthony. And Steve asks, well, what happens when sex workers died? And Anthony said more than likely it was a pauper's burial. Basically, they dug a hole in the ground, Mm -hmm. put her in, buried her, and were like, see ya. Mm -hmm. No headstone, no marker, Mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. So Amy says... Yeah, they uh, they shoved her in a little grave there. She just rotted up. Oh. Yeah. But now, wasn't this lady in history shot in the stomach? Mm-hmm. But this lady, Amy Sal, was shot same. in the head? Yeah, I don't think oh. they're the same girl. Well, it could have been more than one person that was killed yeah. in that. I mean, they did say innocent bystanders yeah. were shot. So, yeah. yeah. So now we're di- Steve goes, I'm going to dig through the archives one last time. And I hit something big. And then they show him and he's, you know, looking up and he goes, and I hit something big. And then he goes, <laughs> looks up like, <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, boy. There was a massive fire that broke out a few houses down from Kristen's in 1916. So then we meet Chief Bill Owens. He's the fire chief. And a Masonic home burned down in 1916. The fire started from the broiler, not boy, boiler, broiler, boiler. I don't know. There's a boiler room. I don't know what a boiler room does. Does it? Uh, I don't know. what. Does it make things warm? I don't know. Yeah. Boiler room is the room where the furnace is. Oh, well, then why don't they just call the it boil- the furnace Boiler is another name for a furnace. That's silly. Okay. Yeah. Well, it used to be. I'm sure there's um, a logical it, reason. I, I think it. it used to be water that was boiled, boil, hot water that heated the house. How does that work? Huh? You'd have to have a small house or a lot of water. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah. So this is great. The The boiler, boiler had a leak. <laughs> And they were like, oh, God, like, just fucking watch it. Like, it'll be fine. So they decided they're like, you know, what? we'll just keep an eye on this boiler and it'll be safe. It'll be fine. Well, then so the six, there was a 16 year old boy who was on watch overnight, which, first of all, why is a 16 year old on watch overnight? He's plenty old enough. <laughs> they probably, put you to work when you were 10. I was just going to say he's probably had a job for five years. Yeah. He's a senior. He's a, he's a senior employee. Yeah. yeah. He fell asleep oh, because no. he's 16. Yeah. Woke up at 2 a.m. and the boiler room was on fire. Ah! <gasps> no. So Matt, at, let me go back to Amy. Matt asks what she's feeling and she just whispers. Fire. She Scary. whispered what? Fire. Oh, I whispered too well. You did. I couldn't hear you. <laughs> and and uh, Zoom likes to cut out. Okay. Like when you whisper, cut yeah. it out. So it's fire. Fire. Got so it. So she said the hallway was burnt and she sees a lady who is burnt. Hmm. So we're back to fire chief Bill Owens. And Steve is like, well, how many people lived here? So 108 people lived there, including children. Of the 108 people, 47 of them were children. So the victims of the fire, we have two elderly couples. Mr. and Mrs. Brown and Mr. and Mrs. Ferris. So I'm guessing one of those couples is the one couple that we saw when Amy first got in who said they like to watch people. Mm -hmm. And then also a young woman who was 20 years old who was working there taking care of the children. This gets real sad. Mm -hmm. She was working there. She was going to get married in the spring. And while she was working there, she had been working on making her wedding dress. So she got all of the kids in her care out. She thought the fire was going to be put out, rushed back in, rushed past a firefighter to grab her wedding dress. Oh, no. And she did not make it out. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, it was real. It was. That's really sad. Yeah. 20 years old for a dress. I mean, I get it. But like, it's a dress. Well, if you think that it's fine and and you think that you're safe. Yeah. yeah. But that's and. There was no evacuation plan whatsoever for this. So the kids were running out into the snow. Some of them were barefoot. Mm. They ran to just houses to ask for help. Just Mm -hmm. people in the middle of the night run into these people's houses asking for help. So then we go to the sketch and Amy says the she's like, I encountered a lot of entities on my walk. But one that concerned me the most was herb, not herb. (laughs) I keep wanting to say herb, herb. I want to say herb. (laughs) Because, you know, I cook with herbs. That's right. 
Unless you're in England and then you cook with herbs. Then you cook with herb. And Zoe's like... Cannibals. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe you just cook with herb. Like he's Oh, like he's helping boiling. you. Yeah, yeah, he's your sous chef. That got dark. You got... You took that dark. <laughs> I was like, oh, herb, what a helper. And you're like, oh, herb, let's season you. <laughs> <sighs> long pig so <laughs> it, so when she's drawing or not drawing she's talking to the sketch artist this was very more conversational very uh-huh. more conversational <laughs> she said he has a long oval face a drinker's nose which is a big red nose yep and two gin blossom we call those what gin blossom it's called a <gasps> gin blossom oh my god maybe that's where the band the gin blossoms got yeah, their name from of course yeah look at that 38 yeah. learn something new every day yep and he has two chins which is like easy amy you don't know what his <laughs> life was like <laughs> maybe he was just looking down funny yeah oh judge no she wasn't judging him but so then we go to the reveal and then we get a ring shot right there steve's just sitting like this with a big old ring shot uh yep so it's Kristen and jason and then Amy does a voiceover stating that the minute she walked into the house, she knew that somebody there had abilities and she's pretty sure it's Kristen. Mm-hmm. And so she said the first entity she encountered was a dead girl. She saw guns, a gun, brains and blood. She said she saw she was killed by a gun and saw her being thrown into a shallow grave. And so that's when Steve is like, this used to be a violent neighborhood in Delano. Yes. <laughs> I had to think about it. Steve <laughs> says there was a shootout between two brothel owners. And then he talks about how, you know, Rowdy Joe and Redbeard, you know, were like, beer, 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 when mm-hmm. Andy Franklin, you know, was shot in the stomach. And then we kind of move on from that. That's really all they talk about with that. You know, Amy okay. doesn't go into much more detail or if she does. She's there. like, that has nothing to do with what I saw, but She's please like, That's, continue. Tell me more about what <laughs> I saw. <laughs> Steve's like, well, actually, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Let me mansplain it to Let you. Let me mansplain your abilities. It's probably <laughs> this. I'm just kidding. I cannot see Steve doing that. No, I don't think so either. Um, and then Amy said she saw children playing and there was a fire. And every time I say that, I'm like, Lord Jesus, there's a fire. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> so Amy said she said the hallway was on fire. Amy said, she said, Amy, Amy said, she said, said, she said, <laughs> I, said, she said? That, I said, Amy said that she said that I said, <laughs> no. Amy said that the hallway was on fire and she saw a woman who was burned. So I'm guessing that's the woman who ran back in for her wedding dress and her passed dress, away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's where Steve talks about the fire and, you know, the Masonic house in 1960, the boiler room was on fire. <laughs> and that's when Kristen says, well, she actually will hear kids running in the hall and she hears kids talking Mm -hmm. and jason talks about when he felt the cold hands go over his both his hands and then he looked and saw the little girl you know standing next to his bed and so i'm get these are probably all and they didn't talk about you know children being victims in the fire so i don't know if this is residual or if Mm -hmm. they just didn't bring up the the kids who passed away yeah and then amy said Coming from the back door into the dining area, there was a line of dead people walking in. And she said they're drawn here by something. And she said, this isn't good for the living or the dead. Okay. So Amy said that these dead people coming in and out, you know, are having a negative effect, upset stomach, ulcers, fatigue. And then Jason said, you know, when he's there, his stomach will get upset and he'll feel super nauseous. But when he's not at the house, he's fine. He goes, it's really weird. And I'm like, it's really not that weird to like feel sick and then feel fine. But whatever. Okay. Okay, Jason. (laughs) Um, And then Amy talks about Herb. She said he's an elderly man and he got physical with her. Physical. He, she said he's learned how to manipulate the body and she said it was like an onslaught and she said it was a really, really painful. Mm. Amy says that he prefers the back bedroom and she's concerned about the children and without a doubt, he's back there in that area. Kristen talks about what she happened when she was feeding her grandson. Nobody reached through the window, Steve. <laughs> and I mean, is that not the dumbest thing you've heard him That's- ask? Not even hear him, but grasping at straws. That's grasping at straws. 
Like, that's a Greg thing. Yeah. <laughs> kept it Greg. He's like, well, what if? Well, but maybe. But was the window maybe, open? Was the window maybe. open? Did a dog reach through and grab you? <laughs> Honestly, and like, I get that Steve has to like yeah. rule everything out. Right. I think we can rule that out, Steve. I think we I can. I think rule we out. can rule a stranger <laughs> opening the window, cutting through the screen, and grabbing her arm. Yeah. I think so. I think so. So, uh, when Amy first encountered Herb, Herb, he seems. <laughs> I really have to enunciate it now. <laughs> she said he seemed like a grumpy old man like you know kind of endearing like you're just a grumpy crotchety old man okay boomer you know like calm down (laughs) in my day we used to go to the video store and rent the videos (laughs) sure grandma you idiot (laughs) sure sure (laughs) let's get you sitting down now let's get you sitting down with your tea you (laughs) idiot (laughs) But then she said once he figured out that she was not there to help him get rid of the living, that's when he started attacking her and trying to jump her and just being a dick. And Steve found a picture of the former owner and he brings it out and shows it to them. And and Amy had a sketch done of Herb and Herb. Herb. And they show it, and it's not the same guy. And so Steve goes, well, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> who the fuck is this? Who is this? New is sketch. This? Who this? Who t- <laughs> <laughs> New sketch. Who this? Who you? Yeah, it's says, certainly not Rowdy Joe. No, it's not Rowdy Joe. No. Hang on. I, no, we don't know who it is. Like, okay. There's nobody in the episode that it could be. Okay. Because Steve is like, who the fuck is this? Okay, he didn't say that. I'm paraphrasing what Steve said. Um, he probably did say that. And then they probably, made him say, like, Steve, can you do that again? But without the fuck? Steven. He's like, who the hell is this guy? Like, I don't know, Steve. I don't know. We don't know. Amy says that Herb is attracted to the house because there's somebody very powerful there who's very open. And Amy believes that Kristen's abilities are super powerful. And this is some Amy, like, she really had some really good, like, insights this episode. And she said there's one question that she asks people to see if they might be sensitive. Do you have visit vivid dreams? And I have, when I, okay, oh so God. I have the most vivid dreams. When That's I was true. in high school, I was on the swim team. You wouldn't know what to look at me, but I used to be a swimmer. A long time and ago. Long time ago. And for, you know, every year for the banquet, they would do these things like this girl is funny, this girl, blah, blah, blah. And so one year I was the girl. They gave me a dream journal because every day at practice I would come in and I would be like, you guys will not believe the dream that I had last (laughs) night. Oh, my God. Do you still have a dream journal? No. You should. I should. I have books on like dream interpretations. I do too. I've always had fucking dream dreams. Yeah. And not I, like even if they're not bad dreams, like they're always so vivid. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have a dream journal right next to my bed, but usually I'm too lazy to actually like turn on the light and grab the mm-hmm. pen and write stuff down. Right. And I probably wouldn't be able to read it anyway. But <laughs> I have. It'd be fun to try. I know. Well, I did try automatic writing. That's a different thing. But I have I use Google Keep on my phone. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when I wake up in the middle of the night after a weird dream. Mm-hmm. I just open it up and then I turn on like as you were to like type if as you were to type a note mm-hmm. Greg's banging around up there god damn it Greg. I know. and Did somebody reach um, through the window and do it though yeah <laughs> probably sorry and so I just I I use the talk to text mm-hmm. thing on my keyboard mm-hmm. so i just hit that button and then i just talk it in oh, there while it, so i'm like half asleep smart. and i'm like so i was at the store and this guy came in and he was like greg but it wasn't greg and then <laughs> you know all that kind of shit yes and then and then i can go back to sleep yeah and then i wake up in the morning and i read it and i'm like oh yeah that was fucked up yeah <laughs> yeah i usually so- don't stay awake for dreams unless they're really scary and then i'm like 
Then I text my friends who are in other time zones and I'm yeah. like, please be awake with me for a little bit because I'm really scared. Yeah. You can always text me. I'm probably awake writing my own dreams down. So, <laughs> but no, I, then, I, I recommend doing that. So I you should. have some kind of, I because, should. that's smart because a lot of times I wake up and if I don't document it, I just know that I had a weird dream, but I don't remember mm-hmm. the details this way. I, because I've said it, yeah. Again, when it's still yeah. fresh, it does stay in my mind yeah. longer. And even if okay. it doesn't necessarily, mm-hmm. it's still there. You know, it's still there in my keep, in my notes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then if I read it back, I go, oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. remember it. Yeah. 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 So do you have vivid dreams? And Kristen says always. And she said they're so clear that she remembers them the whole next day into the wow. next night. Wow. Yeah. And Amy says that no matter where she goes, she's going to open doorways. Uh, she says it's Kristen. It's not the house. Yeah. And she tells Kristen, you come with the door. And she said, Kristen is open. The dead are looking for help. Mm-hmm. And they're going to seek her out. And Kristen says she actually got emotional learning that Amy was going to come here. She said she started to feel guilty like she was letting someone down. But she didn't know who. She just felt that way. Oh. Uh. And she said, it's really, it's a really sad feeling that comes over her. Mm-hmm. And Amy so she's says, probably an empath too. Yeah. W- yep. She's probably an empath. And so Amy says that as sensitives, the dead will form relationships with them. And she said the dead move in because they're, because sensitives are still alive and the dead don't want to leave. They, they want to be connected to the mm-hmm. living somehow. And then they show video of the veins popping out and what happened to Kristen. And Amy does a voiceover and she says she's seen attacks like that before and it's not good. It's very dangerous and it can cause serious damage if Kristen doesn't put a stop to it. Uh-huh. And so she she explains jumping, you know, what that is. And then she starts talking about the bug entity and how it crawls on the on the roof, goes to the window. I forgot about it, the bug. Yeah, I know. There's lots going so on. So much shit went on in between. Yeah. I forgot all about that damn well, bug. Herb is kind of... Herb. Herb is dominating it. So. so it attached itself to Kristen. And Amy says, well, what happens if they decide to do nothing and just kind of live the way they're living? And Amy says, well, if this thing gets in, Kristen will lose her mind. She'll go insane. Oh, no. So... Um, what can they do, you know, to, to fix it? And Amy says, the first thing that you need to do is set boundaries. She said, a lot of these dead people are just roaming around. And Amy says, they need to seal their house. You need to put salt around the house outside and then sage the inside of the house to stop energy from getting in and tell all the spirits to leave and then seal the property to keep the family safe. And that way the dead are also helped in an appropriate way. And then with her, Herb, she said, you have to be firm. And he wants to move in and he take over, but he can't because he's dead. And this is where I was really like blown away by what she said. She said, you're alive. Your energy surpasses his energy. Mm. She said, we are alive. We have control. They cannot be in our space. Mm. And that to me was so like, it just struck me as so powerful because it's true. Like, as, as scary as ghosts can be, and they can be really scary, Sure, we have more power than they do simply by being alive. Interesting. Yeah. I thought you that just was have to so, own your power. And, yeah. You just and, have to realize, yeah. no, 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 no. I'm in control. Okay. You're not. Mm-hmm. I'm alive. You're not. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I say what happens. Yeah. And I know hmm. there are probably some entities that that wouldn't work for, like mm-hmm. the bug thing and, you know, other things. But for the, I mean, she, you know, was telling Herb, you know, stop, stop it. Yeah. Leave me alone. Yeah, they can. She said, we have control. They cannot be in our space. And I just hmm. really liked that a lot. I'm like, that is, you know, and Amy, I love, I love it. Like, mm-hmm. it's true. We have energy. We have more energy than they do by simply existing. Mm-hmm. So then Kristen has followed Amy's advice, but she still struggles to remain closed. And mm. that's understandable. I mean, if you've been open your whole life whole without life. knowing it, yeah. it's going to be tough to just, boom, close it down. Well, and also, if you're an empath, 
which I assume she is. I assume she is. She probably feels bad about closing off because she's like, well, now I can't help people that need my help. Right. So by closing off, I'm saying, fuck you. Yeah. And I don't want to do that. Right. But in real, real, realistically, though, she can do both. Mm -hmm. She's got to set those boundaries. Boundaries. Yep. She has to have like, I will help you, Mm -hmm. you know, but not right now. Yeah, like you know, between the hours of like like <laughs> my know, office, like hours office hours are <laughs> one to five p.m. Yep. thirty minutes for lunch. Yeah, yeah, one at a time. Yeah, single file. Get in a line. Take a number. Yeah. So the attacks have decreased since Amy's visit. Good. They haven't stopped, but they've decreased. Mm-hmm. So that was a really good episode. Yeah. And I just really liked what she said at the end. We're like yeah. we're in charge. Yeah. And they're not. Yeah. That's great. And as somebody who is afraid of ghosts, even I'm obsessed with them. I know you guys, it's weird. I'm an <laughs> I'm an enigma. I'm an enigma. That's good to know because mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. That that reminds me. I know that I've texted you about this, but I don't think we've spoken about it in real life. And to be uh, fair, even if you've texted me, I probably forgot. Well, so. okay. Well, to refresh your mind a little bit. <laughs> so I have been watching this show called Psychic Kids. Oh, it's, yeah. Uh, I think it's on Discovery. It is on Discovery. I've seen it before. And you've seen the show? No, I've seen like, like, just, the, like the thumbnail there. of yeah. it. Yeah. So it's, I highly recommend watching it. It is so good. Okay. So the uh, the season that's on right now is, I think, the second season mm-hmm. because there was another show called Psychic Kids hyphen something else, you know, like mm-hmm. a longer title. And it was 10 years ago mm-hmm. and it was children who were psychic and were having issues and didn't understand how to use Mm -hmm. their powers and stuff. And a medium Mm -hmm. would come in and help them Mm -hmm. learn it. Yeah. The episode or the season that's on right now is those kids (gasps) from the other episode now coming in. They're 10 years older. They're in their twenties. Yeah. They're now coming in to help other children (gasps) who are going through this stuff. I love that. And it's so good. It's so good the, I'll have to the check it mentors out. who were yeah. the children before mm-hmm. the mentors are so wonderful and they're mm-hmm. so good with these kids mm-hmm. and the kids are just so sweet and mm-hmm. like trying to understand what the fuck is going on and and when they they flash back to the previous season or previous yeah season the previous mm-hmm. series mm-hmm. and one of the psychics who mediums whatever he is who's now helping the new kids mm-hmm. his mentor was chip coffee <gasps> so chip no. coffee's in some of the flashbacks yeah oh bitchin i know right don't but, do it what are you talking my cat to? he's trying oh. to get up <laughs> that that was herb herb <laughs> But yeah, I recommend. I recommend watching. That sounds it. good. Super good. It's that super, sounds super really big. good. Yeah, really, it's really, really fun. good. Oh, really, really good. Well, yeah, good yeah. job. That was a lovely. That was a good one. A lovely recap. We took the first half of the recap together because I don't remember the part of the episode watching it because it was so long ago. <laughs> you know, the last episode that I covered with you, mm-hmm. we had. I had watched it, mm-hmm. done my notes, mm-hmm. and then I begged. And we were going to do it another couple of days later. That and then you got you, your back <laughs> went out and then we couldn't do it then. And then oh, we were going right. to do it like the next week. And then your back was still bad and you couldn't do so it we, again. Yeah. So we I did watched it. that fucking episode three times because I kept forgetting. About, I'm like, I, it was like three weeks ago that I yeah. first watched. So then we finally did on. it when I was on the couch. Yeah. And you were upstairs laying there because like, I couldn't go down the stairs. <laughs> When it first happened, the day it happened, you guys, I literally had to crawl into my house on my hands and knees because I could not get up my steps. I couldn't walk oh up my steps. God. So I had did to it crawl. come on really quick, like when you were driving home from work or what? So I put Jordan in the car seat and that's when I tweaked it. And then it just kept getting progressively worse and oh, worse and worse. No. Okay. So well, I'm glad you're feeling better. Me too. Thank yeah. It was worse than childbirth. Oh, to be really? fair, I did have a, an epidural, but before I had the epidural, it was worse than that. So, Amy, what are we talking about next time? Well, I'm not really sure. We are either going to just because Amy will be with us. uh, New Amy, which we need a uh, new Amy. We need a nickname for her. Not new Uh, Amy. Or or I I don't know. I can have a nickname. Bitchin' Amy. 
bitch baby. <laughs> we'll figure out something to call I her. would love to do some alliteration because you know how I love a good alliteration. Right, right, right. So I'll, we'll workshop it. Yeah, we'll figure it out. If you guys yeah. have any ideas, let us yeah, know. Yeah, if you have any anyway. ideas, shoot it to us. Beep yeah. Boom. So <laughs> Amy will be with us next week. We are either going to just shoot the shit and yep. introduce you guys to her yep. or we'll let her do a recap because there yes. is a show that she wants to recap. Yes. But I don't know if she's ready to jump right in with. It's an episode, Elsie isn't and, it? Yeah. Yeah. An episode of the Dead Files that an she wanted to An episode of the recap. Dead Files. Yeah. I, I won't tell you what it is yet, but yeah. it's uh, it's one that she has. She mentioned that to both to Megan both and I us. separately yes. that she thought we should cover it. And I was like, oh, OK, I'll do it next week. And then. Yeah. When we decided to bring her on, I was like, why don't I just have her do it? So what if Amy does it? What if Amy does it? So yes. we'll see. She either yes. she'll do that. If she doesn't want to, that's fine. Yep, that's Whatever. Totally fine. We can just shoot the shit. Like I said, this is gonna be our last episode of season three. Mm -hmm. And then the one with Amy will be. Yes. 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 And then we will jump right in with recapping the, the new first season. episode of season. 15 of the dead files yes. which airs june 1st mm -hmm. and we'll watch it as soon as we can mm -hmm. after it's released mm -hmm. and then we will talk about it and then give it to you the week after so mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. that's the plan that's the plan really quick fun fact shark week this week <gasps> this year it's this week oh. it's no it's this year trust me oh. you would know we i was you gonna say know. guess who's hosting it <gasps> i don't know Jason Momoa. Oh, I know. Wow, it's weird though because it's Tuesday to Tuesday this year, and it's always been Sunday to Sunday. July eleventh. He must have been busy on Monday. Or Sunday and yeah, Monday. he's like, listen, I can do it, but only if we do it. Tuesday only Tuesday to Tuesday. To Tuesday. To Tuesday. That's that's Sorry. real strict. I got set some boundaries somewhere. I got stuff. Yeah, I got boundaries. I got yeah. stuff. So July eleventh. Through July 18th oh, okay. is Shark okay. Week 2023. All so right. mark your calendars. Good to know. Good we to know, know I have. Yep. Yep. That reminds me because mm -hmm. you lost a shark from Follow, right? I did. Yeah. I think that Regina, my penguin, might might either. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say her tracker fell off. Okay. When. Yeah. So if you have you clicked on her. Yeah. When's the last time she was pinged? It was like three months ago. Oh, yeah. She's probably gone. Yeah. Her tracker. Either. I mean, her tracker's gone. Yeah. Her tracker fell off. So yeah. I, I'll reach out to them and say, yeah. you know, do you know anything about which? Yeah. And you can uh, do that because I did that with yeah. Thor. And I was I like, did that. Yeah. I did that with my elephant that I didn't understand. Yeah. Yeah. At the time, I wasn't paying attention that they right. report the elephant's location four months, four months after later. so that poachers don't go after him. Good. So and perfect. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, I my Barbara, my mm -hmm. my uh, polar bear, I she, I. I saw her just a couple of days ago. She's kicking. But Regina is, she is, her tracker fell off. And We're that's going to go with that. Her tracker that fell happens. off. She's, she's an old lady. You know, she's a, an older lady. So I don't know. But maybe she's with Herb. Maybe, <laughs> maybe she's with Herb or Babu or whatever, which was your shark. Babu. Oh, yeah. I hope she's not with the shark. Maybe anyway. Well, I don't think sharks, well, they do eat penguins. Sorry. We'll see. Nature is savage, you guys. Nature yep. is fucking savage. Oh. Um, yeah. Uh, all you have to do is look in my backyard and watch my little baby Yorkie Maul literally a rabbit to death. tear a rabbit apart. I I will I will put a trigger warning on this, but I to say it was traumatic is an understatement. Uh, I it was like yeah. she was yeah. a demon. <laughs> and I'm like, look it up. I mean, hey. to be fair, to be fair though, <laughs> to be fair, like she is technically a predator. Yeah, I say she's... technically because she's about six inches long. But <laughs> <laughs> she is bred to be a a ratter or a mouser. You know, yeah. that's what that's her job. A little baby bunny looks just like that. I get I it, know. but uh. Oh my god and she was <sighs> fucking prouder than shit i'm sure she was I'm she's sure sitting she's like, there wagging her tail nature traumatic. is savage you guys like it's not, savage not. so anyway we need anyway, an alanism alanism because i always pick it is time for an alanism it's time for an alanism let's see okay i've always liked this one 
This is number 26. Okay. And I'm going to guess that this was when he dropped something Mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. And he says, I am usually more adroit with my finger butters. (laughs) My finger butters. My finger butters. (laughs) That's good. Yeah, that's a cute one. That's cute. It's so cute. so cute. 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 All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining us. And next week, there will be three of us. There will be growing. Yay. Skyrocket. Anyway. In flight. So that's. Afternoon. To- nope. Not. Not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, listen, if you want afternoon delight, that's great. But that's not I mean, what the podcast for is. Yeah. No. Live your live your truth. Live your freedom. That's right. That's right. All right. Okay. On that well, note. Once again, thanks, everybody. Thanks for <laughs> thanks joining everybody. us. Thanks, everybody. We will see you next time yes. with Amy. Yes. Bye. See you later. Bye. Okay. This is Amy L. here doing the fact check for this episode, which in the future will be done by the other Amy. So the things we talked about that we had questions on. The first one is Shomer Nagia. It literally means preserve touch. It's not about limiting touch. It's about using the power of touch where it can generate the most sparks on the inside of a committed relationship. I found this in an article that I will link to in the show notes. Then Megan said that she thinks the world was supposed to end around this time, May 25th. In 2012, it was actually December 21st, uh, 2012. And I have a link to that in the show notes as well. About wine berries. Patron Amy had said that Grapes used to be called wine berries, and Megan and I both loved that, and we're calling them that from now on. And I found uh, online it said it was from Middle English, wineberry, W-Y-N-B-E-R-I-E, a grape or other some kind of berry, from Old English, winberge, W-I-N-B-E-R-G-E, okay, and then from Proto-Germanic, winabasia, is equivalent to wine and berry. It's a doublet of Wimbury, Wimbury, Bilbury. I don't know how helpful that is, but in other words, it's true. Wine berries. So grapes henceforth will be called wine berries in our world. Megan noted the Dakota County Paranormal Society. I Googled them and I did find their Facebook page. I put a link in the show notes, but it does seem like they're not uh, active anymore. In 2020, they announced they were taking a break on investigations due to health issues, and it doesn't look like they came back from that. So sorry to hear that. Dakota Paranormal Society, if you are still around, reach out, let us know, and we'll make an adjustment in our next episode. A boiler room was mentioned. Megan wasn't sure what it was. I said it was a room with a furnace in it, and uh, I guess it sort of is. It's from British English. It's a noun. Any room in a building, often in the basement, that contains a boiler for central heating. So I guess a boiler and a furnace are the same thing. I mentioned a show called Psychic Kids, and I wasn't sure what the name of the previous series was that this one was built on. It was called Psychic Kids, Children of the Paranormal. And I'm not sure where you can see that. I couldn't find it anywhere. I think that's it. Those are our fact checks for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Activity Continues podcast. We really appreciate you giving us your ears for a bit. Please reach out if you have a suggestion for which episode of The Dead Files we should cover next, or if you have a spooky story you'd like us to share on the show. We can be reached at theactivitycontinues at gmail.com or through our website or any of our socials. Links are all in the description of the show. Please feel free to drop us a note and say hi. And join us next time when The Activity Continues. The Activity Continues is produced by me, Amy, at Collected Sounds Media and is part of the independent Collected Sounds Podcast Network. We are also proud members of the Boopod Network of super cool podcasts. Nailed it.